always said if I got an opportunity to interview, I was going to ask you uh, about the lip. Is that something? <laughs> <laughs> Have you always done that? Uh, well, I think uh, sort of the music kind of makes it happen. Like those guys are playing music, so the, the lip just starts. Yeah, it just goes. Yes. How's your health? <clears throat> My doctor's not around, is he? Oh, it's great. It's really great. <laughs> We're glad, man. We're yeah, glad. Thank you. I don't know if this is a subject you even want to get into, but somebody told me the process that the doctors use to help you recover actually didn't exist like a decade ago and you would have lost your leg? Yeah, that's right. I think uh, 10 years ago I would have, yeah, I'd, I would have had my leg amputated. But uh, thank God the orthopedic surgeons and the plastic surgeons have developed uh, such a system of magic. Mm. I think it's definitely got something to do with a charmed life, if you ask me. Yeah. Okay. No, okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Stop. 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 <laughs> I looked at the title of the album and I said, that must be the reason. Uh, charmed life. Is that where it came from? Uh, actually, no, I, th I thought of that title a long time before. Um, mainly, I, I thought, of, thought about it mainly because I, I just thought it was kind of funny because I think a lot of, a lot of people, especially, uh, say, back in England or um, even a lot of critics, really thought that uh, Billy Idol would burn out a lot sooner than he has. And um, it, was, it was kind of my own sense of fun, really. But funnily enough, the accident seemed to make it all, you know, come true. Yeah. that uh, I was very lucky, or I was lucky to have a life that's worth getting better for. Yeah. You know, I, I sit here and I look at your wardrobe, it's your overall image, we talked about the lip. Well, I'm looking at your wardrobe <laughs> as well, <laughs> mate. Look at that. Yeah, we'll talk about this later. <laughs> but uh, last night we had a gentleman here, a rapper, KRS-One, he was talking about how the industry will try to change you. Did people try to change this when you first came? Well, yeah, when I, when I first came to the States, uh, even my management uh, at the time showed me pictures of like Rick Springfield and <laughs> said, said, Billy, if you, if you brush your hair down and become David Cassidy, the world is yours. And I, I basically told him to, <laughs> to F off. And yeah. uh, that's only because I want to get my seven minutes in. And, uh, I, you know, and, and it, I think it works, because I think if you don't stick to your guns, you've, you, you've got nothing that you can fire off yourself. You've got nothing of your own personality that you can use, so you don't know if you're good or you're bad or what you really like. And so if you sort of pander to other people sometimes, well, maybe it's going to work for five minutes, but it's not going to make you happy. And that's what I thought in the end. I, I wanted to make me happy. Yeah. Yeah. Are you happy with everything? Do you, do you look sometimes and say, uh, I wish I hadn't have done that? Well, I, I think that's the great thing. I mean, obviously, uh, obviously I've, I've messed up in my life. Like, <laughs> you know, a few months ago, I had a really serious accident. I guess uh, that was definitely a mistake. But, um, but at the same time, I mean, I think you have to, you have to look at what you do and, and love it. You have to be excited about it and propelled by it and enjoy it and just want to get out there and show people that, yes, I believe. I know it sounds almost a bit corny, but I mean, that's what I meant about, I mean, I'm, I'm lucky, I'm like those guys up there, I get to play music all day long, and a lot of other people come along and shout and wave their fists and go crazy and burn off all their anxieties and all their anguish and uh, God knows what else. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and I, I like that, and it's great fun. And I was, it was great to wake up in the hospital bed after the, my accident and realise that uh, if I did get better, that it was worth it. Yeah. Oh, it's just getting really cool. Right? Oh. <laughs> I don't get to travel much. What do you but think I... of my big stick? Uh, <laughs> just don't put a glow in the dark condom on it. Oh. <laughs> uh, I don't get to travel much, but I get a lot of 411 from across the water. And everybody knows Billy Idol is into women real hard. But yet. <laughs> yeah, but. Somebody told me you jumped in the lap of a chat host over there and kissed him. What, well, if you want me to do the same thing? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just wondering what happened. Uh, <laughs> that girl's well, famous. She likes to watch. She don't like you. <laughs>
Yeah, well, I, I like to watch as, as well, but uh, I'd rather be doing it. I don't know. I was, <laughs> you know, those, those sex shows where you get to watch, I'd, I'd rather be the person on the stage doing it. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, uh, yeah, so what, what happened over there? <laughs> Uh, uh, well, I, I, there's this, there's this uh, chat show. So he used to be a fan of, of an old group I was in called Generation X. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. and so uh, one way or another, you know, uh, it was good fun just to just to sort of mess him up for a second. But he's he's rather like you. He's got a hell of a sense of humour. Yeah, he must. Because <laughs> thank God he had one. Yeah, because yeah, I'm into your work, and if you tried to kiss me, I would have to run. <laughs> Have to run. Well, don't worry about that. Okay. This is boring. Let's talk about watching. Uh, ever, ever watch two women make love? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't you like awkward moments like this? Uh, I didn't feel that awkward. <laughs> I know. I was cool, but there were people over there from South Africa saying, what kind of show is this? <laughs> <laughs> um, Great show, I am. <laughs> You're a big Star Trek fan. Um, yeah, actually, once when I was uh, my 29th birthday, William Shatner and uh, Leonard Nimoy sent me some congratulatory telegrams uh, saying happy birthday and that. Yeah, I mean, I think it's the tackiest thing alive, but it's kind of great. You know? <laughs> kind of fun, yeah. They, uh, they actually tape it on this lot. You should go over there and have them beam you in. They probably wouldn't let me in. They probably think I'm one of the aliens. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing another song for us later? Yeah. <laughs> Crazy for you, man. Crazy for you. What you gonna do when you go over there? Uh, well, uh, do you, let's, do you want to find out? Yeah, let's let it be a surprise. Yeah, all right. Okay. Hey, I'm, I'm gonna be going on tour soon, so if anybody fancies seeing a recording, Cripple, come and see ya! Yes, yes. Yeah, next week we're starting in Canada, and then we come down through the States, and uh, we'll end up here in October, so, uh, are you okay. gonna come? I'll check you out when you're here. Yeah, you gonna be at the forum, or...? Yeah, that's right, yeah. It's a long time away, though, but... I'll check it out. If this leg makes it, I'll be there. I'll be there too, man. I'll be there too. We'll be back with a surprise from Billy Idol.